Hello, greetings, and welcome to the show. I am your host, Maggie Cavanaugh, and today I have a sister in Christ with me who has a heart for the just the nation, uh, and I love watching her show on Creative Motion Network, and so I want to reach out to her and interview her today. So if any of you do not know her about her show, know about her books, know about her speaking, that you would be able to connect with this amazing woman of God. So welcome to the show, Janice. Thank you for coming on with me today. You are most welcome, Miss Maggie. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor and pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time to be here with the audience because I wanted to share with them uh, some of the things. You know, I've been watching your show from Destruction to Dignity. And there's always so many good topics on there. Yes. And you have quite the diverse background. I do. I do. <laughs> it's, a, it's just great because you get, you know, you get it with the the spiritual flow because yes. you're all, all about Jesus. Yes. I but do. yet there's so many great topics on there. So what made you want to start that show? Well, I've always had it in my heart uh, to speak uh, to the nation, as you say, to the nation and to people uh, the professionally, uh, the platforms that I've been in have just lended themselves towards that. And so I actually had uh, someone to speak into my life, uh, Apostle Dr. Paula, Paula A. Price. Uh, she spoke into my life regarding uh, speaking out. We need to get you out there. You need to do, we need to get you recorded. And I had spoken at a summit that she had, an apostolic summit. I didn't even know what that was. I had gone, gone on her show that she has every Thursdays uh, at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live. And so she asked me to come and speak at the summit. I came and spoke at the summit. I told a few stories related to clinical issues, spiritual issues. And I told a pow very powerful story that I share in the first podcast that I did on From Destruction to Dignity. And one thing she said to me, she said, Janice, you know what you did with that man? And it was a man who was totally out of control. And the Holy Spirit, is all, I've always depended upon him in my therapeutic interactions, therapeutic groups, individual therapy sessions. I'm a licensed clinician, although I'm working as an administrator now, and a, a number of other things that I do. Uh, but I always ask the Holy Spirit, please show me. This is your group. This is your session. Lead me, guide me, direct me. So I was dealing with a very out of control, uh, totally uh, out of their mind person. And I and 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 I spoke something into his life, and he melted. I mean, he was destructive. He was totally into a pathway of destruction, getting ready to throw a chair through a window. And I just said, Maggie, I just simply look at the man. I said, Sir, Sir, look at me. Tell me, what do you need right now? Mm. And he looked at me like I had lost my mind. Now he was cussing, ranting, raving. He was on a pathway of destruction before he came in to this treatment facility where I worked. He definitely was on a pathway of destruction with addiction, mental health issues that had not been addressed. He was just totally out of control. He was on a pathway of death. And sure enough, he was just went off in the group. And I just looked at him and was like, okay, here's a moment of truth. And the Holy Spirit has always given me a cadence that is straight from him when I'm dealing with violent, out of control people and in therapeutic settings. And so I just looked at him and I said, sir, tell me, what do you need right now? And he was like, what do you mean? What do I need right now? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what do you need right now, sir? Tell me. And he just, he started cussing, but he told me I need somebody and he used some choice words. I need somebody to listen to me. Well, that's what I'm trained to do. I have a trained ear. I have over 40 years of experience in behavioral health. I know how to listen and I have discernment as well by the Holy Ghost. And uh, I said, I'm here, please put the chair down. And I pulled my chair right in front of him. He still had the chair over his head. And I said, sir, I respectfully request that you put that chair down. <laughs> put the chair down. I am here for you. Tell me, what do you need? Uh-oh. Lost volume. Uh, I got a lot going on. <laughs> there we go. People, people uh, are not used to anyone asking them what do they need, particularly if they're dealing with degradation, shame, brokenness, and that type of thing. They're just not used to it. 
And so God has given me an, an, an anointing and, and a love and a compassion to reach those types of people. So long story short, he put the chair down and in less than three minutes, the man was weeping like a mm -hmm. baby and telling me what he needed. And it was so powerful because right there on the spot, Maggie, we were able to formulate a plan to get him from point A to point B, from B to C. And to make a longer story even shorter, he became a, a leader on that unit and just totally turned his life around. But I took that one moment just to say, sir, what do you need right now? And Dr. Price, when she heard me tell that story, when I spoke at this uh, summit <clears throat> last year, she told me, she said, Jan at the end, she said, Janice, you know what you did? And I was like, what did I do? She said, you took him from destruction to dignity. And I was like, wow, that, wow. Did, that is a... Got a lot of demand going on uh, 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 from destruction to dignity. And uh, I said, wow, that is supposed to be the title of something. And one thing led to another, and she and I would get together and talk, and she just was speaking to my life. And she just told me, you know, we, you, you really need to get out there and start talking about what's in your heart. And so it just comes natural because I, I've had a lot of experience as a teacher, school psychologist, uh, substance abuse tre uh, treatment, uh, program director, coordinator, supervisor, clinical consultant, author, um, uh, speaker, singer. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've done a, a, a lot of different things that have just uh, exposed me to uh, the precious fruit of the earth that God wants to reach. He just wants to reach people and uh, he'll meet them right where he is. And that's what I've learned, Maggie, is that um, if we would just, as the body of Christ, as uh, believers, if we would simply meet people right where they are and try yes. instead of trying to make them into what we want them to be, we, we will get far, far, far along the path of them becoming who God <clears throat> has called them to be. I'm convinced that people are called to greatness and they just don't know it yet. They don't know it. And uh, so it, it get, they don't know it because uh, it gets in their barriers such as addiction, depression, anxiety, uh, domestic violence, uh, all types of things, abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, financial abuse, you name it, I've seen it. And uh, <clears throat> uh, eating disorders, these are the type of to topics that I talk about on the podcast because there are so many destructive patterns that that we can deal with but god wants to take us from destruction to dignity and so many times in the body of christ you've seen this if you live long enough you'll see it you know we'll we'll hear people say well you know honey it's all covered by the blood of jesus you just need to pray harder you just need to press in a little more and you know what it is covered by the blood of jesus in addition to that there is a broken heart often that uh needs mending and if that broken heart is not addressed it will extrapolate into a toxic soul, toxicity yeah. in one soul, where their mind, their emotions, their will, their intellect, their drive, and their desire is just tainted, it's twisted, it's broken. And, and, and people end up being in a perpetual cycle of, of, of destruction that they can't seem to break loose of. And I mean, we see people that are in major positions falling because they haven't dealt with those issues. That's and so right. I, 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 it's so strong. It always has been strong on me to give the body of Christ uh, to, to, to encourage us to have a language. You have to have a language to these things, because if you have a language to it, you start naming and explaining. You name and explain. You name and explain. What do, mean, what do we mean by name? It could be, I'm scared. I mean, I'm, I'm really scared. Name it and explain. I'm scared about what? I'm scared that I may fail. I'm scared that someone's not going to accept me. I'm scared that I'm going to be rejected again. Name and explain it. And when we do that, we take our life back one thought and one feeling at a time. And so I've just seen the Holy Spirit doing a 50 minute therapeutic <laughs> group. Amazing things. And so I, you know, he really put it on my heart to, uh, uh, to encourage the body of Christ to let's go there. <laughs> let's go there. And one of the things that I talk about a lot is denial, D-E-N-I-A-L. We are often walking around in denial, denial, oh, yeah. denial. Yeah. And that acronym stands for don't 
even notice I am lying. We do it all the time. And it's like, oh, I'm a Christian. I don't lie. Well, you just told one. <laughs> a lot of times we do. Because, because we don't. We, we get challenged. We get challenged uh, with walking in the fullness uh, of, of what God has called us to be, uh, who he's called us uh, to uh, reach, uh, what he's called us to do. So it's a path. And of course, the enemy of our soul is going to come against that. That's just how That's it is. Right. The Bible says that when we get that word, you know, it's going to fall on stony ground, good ground, rocky ground. Uh, the birds are going to come and try to eat it immediately. That <laughs> comes with the territory because it says Satan comes immediately to do what? Steal yeah. that word. Comes yeah. immediately to steal that word. But when we walk into uh, the fullness of who God has called us to be, we're aware of it. And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty through God to what? The pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Casting down every vain imagination and every thought that, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So we need to bring these um, these issues, give people the opportunity to go there. And when they give that language to it, people tend to get better. And I would just so desire that the church would embrace that and stop pretending like everything's hunky dory and everything's fine and give people permission to go there and talk about those hidden secrets that are in their soul so we can get healed. Amen. Amen. And I love that. And that's why I love your show so much is I'm a spirit, soul, body kind of girl too. And I've spent a lot of years working on my own soulish issues, yes. which led me to help other people in their brokenness. And, you know, I've always said at the church, you know, a lot of times we're smiling on the outside and bleeding on the inside. And, it, you know, people get that whole, well, you just, you don't have enough faith or you just don't, you need to do this. And like you said, pray some more and so forth. And people need to be validated and they need to know that someone cares. Uh, they don't care how much, what is it saying? You, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. And when you get in the ditch with them and you say, okay, this is an area of your life that can be restored and healed, then it get you know, and when we're transparent and open, like you've been, like this is how it is, laying it out there, it gives them permission to get free because Everybody's telling them just, you know, suck up and deal with it. Just, you know, and you can't just suck up and deal with it. It has to be processed and put in a proper place so they can heal. Absolutely. And and right with what you're saying, God has released me to be able to go into areas that I had not gone into before. And that was with my own family of origin. You know, I, I didn't even realize until I became a licensed clinician and I started doing it, doing an addiction codependency group that I went through that entire four week curriculum at the end of it. The Holy Spirit said, that's what happened to your family. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? And I finally, you know, the Bible says wisdom, <clears throat> excuse me, wisdom is the principal thing, but in all that getting, get understanding. And yes. I just did not understand what had happened to my family. I have three brothers that are lost. They died to addiction. We never talked about it. That's not normal to bury three family members, three brothers wow. to the same issue. And as it turned out, my dad was an alcoholic as well. We didn't even know, even know what alcoholism was. But of course, of course that would end up being my specialty, um, <clears throat> my area of expertise. And that's what was going on with my family on the East Coast while I'm out here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, setting people free. Uh, by setting up uh, treatment programs, but you know, no one talked about it because what happens in dysfunctional families? Uh, we become good window dressers. This is rampant mm -hmm. in the body. Yep. Of this is rampant with pastors' wives. People in right. the ministry, we're good window dressers. We can't let anybody know what's really going on, right? Because what what are they gonna think? You know, and so uh, we don't talk, we don't trust. A lot of times, we don't feel. It, it, we don't talk. You know. We don't want anybody to know what's going on. We got to keep a good front going on. We right. don't know who to, we don't know who to trust, and therefore a lot of times people die prematurely because they 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 haven't reached out to formulate a, a trusting relationship or take a chance to say, look, I'm hurting. I need help. I need to yes. to get some kind of in, intervention here, and we don't feel. See, we we've been taught don't feel. You know, just crush it, put it down. It's all covered right. by the blood of Jesus. Yes, it is. But why do people still hurt? Why are ministers committing suicide? I want to talk right. about those things. And so what I do on, on the podcast, Maggie, and you, 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 you're here, you will hear me 
say this over and over again. I want to provoke thought, bring awareness, and point people towards intervention. And that's what I do. And so on my website, www.janicepons.com, there is a resource page where people are able to go in any issue that they may have. Yes. They're able to go on there from getting a therapist to finding out a support group where there's mental health treatment, whether it's addiction, the need for medically supervised detox, uh, eating disorder, you name it, from A to Z, they're going to be guided and navigated towards, oh, here is where I can call. We just need to give people permission to go there. Amen. Amen. I love that. And I love that you have those resources on your website. I had the opportunity to take a look at your your website and I love it. I love the whole patriotic uh, theme behind it as well. So because you have a background in mental health and all of these areas, you've got a little bit of a, a name in the political arena as being speaking the truth. <laughs> yeah. and you've got a couple books out there. So was about the scapegoat, was that the first book or was the Still in the Minds of America, which which one came first? Still in the Minds of America came first in 2008. Uh, I was a dyed in the wool a liberal uh, with a black twist <laughs> growing, <laughs> <laughs> growing up in the South. And that's how it was. And I was just taught certain things. I grew up in an environment where every thing was racially charged. It just was. That's how it was in the South. You know, the KKK, the Black Panthers, Jim Crow. I grew up in Jim Crow. My great-grandmother was a slave. My dad was a sharecropper. So, see, I, I the full gamut of what Black Americans are have, have been confronted with, a slavery, Jim Crow, sharecropping, and welfare. That's the trajectory that has been weaved into the quote-unquote black, black experience and culture. I grew up in the midst of that. And so I would always hear things growing up, Maggie, that did not settle well in my soul at all. As a matter of fact, as I look back, I realized the Holy Spirit insulated my heart and my soul from things such as this. You can never trust a white person because they'll smile in your face and stab you in your back. And I was like, wow, well, that, that don't make sense to me. All white people can't be that way. That's just <laughs> what I would think, but that's what I would hear. Now, granted, what my dad was going through and Jim Crow with he couldn't buy hamburgers for us. We couldn't eat in restaurants. I couldn't go to movie theaters. Just the whole thing with Jim Crow. The whole thing that was started by the Democratic Party. It just is that, that not one Democrat voted for the 14th and 15th Amendment. The 15th Amendment gave us uh, the right to vote in 1870. A lot of people think that happened in 1964 and 65. No, it happened in 1870. And then uh, uh, we had during Reconstruction, we had all this freedom uh, post uh, Civil War, and then they put us back <laughs> into a form of slavery again through 90 years of Jim Crow, which I went through. So I was just surrounded by everything being racially charged and being told certain things, and the Black Panthers were going to get us free, and just on and on and on and on and on. And so I thought that what my daddy was saying was true to some degree because of what I was surrounded with, but it never would penetrate my soul. And so one thing he would say, you always vote a straight democratic ticket. I was like, huh, why? And I did, and then finally I was like, daddy, why are we supposed to always vote a straight democratic ticket? And he looked at me and he went, because you're black. And I mean, I was startled. I was like, because we're black, we're supposed to do something because we're black. So I was inundated with an environment and a culture that was all black people to stick together and was supposed to do things just because we're black. And I knew in my sanctified soul, as unsanctified as it was back then, I was in the process, <laughs> that I was like, that can't be true. But Maggie, God used the amazing vehicle of integration. The Brown versus Board of Education started in 1954. It took my school system 17 years to comply. So when I was in the ninth grade in 1972, I guess it was, 71, 72, the, the white children came to the all-black school. I had always been curious about white people because I was like, they all can't be bad. <laughs> I said, that doesn't even make sense. 
They breathe, they eat like I do. They go to sleep, they go to the bathroom. The only thing different is our hair and the color of our skin. Come on. And so God used the tool of integration. And long story short, I had the most amazing, powerful, loving, empowering encounters and relationships with white girls. And then we realized that the enemy had kept us separated. And we would hug and cry and kiss and hold each other and rock and realize that we loved each other. And so those shackles were just falling off of us. Amen. So our all black school, Maggie, became like a model of race, racial reconciliation and harmony wow. and peace. It was amazing. And so uh, I began to read and study and research for myself. And I realized I'd been lied to. The things that they had told us historically uh, about black people and political things, there, I, I, I just heard glimmers of things like there was a time where black people were thriving and, and just really uh, just upwardly mobile. And I was like, when was that? Because I was going through Jim Crow when we were trying to make it and I was just trying to figure it out. That's when I began to read and research for myself. And when I began to read and research for myself, it was over because I started reading Harper's Weekly, which were the newspapers back during the days of Civil War and subsequent to it. And I realized we had been totally unequivocally deceived. And mm-hmm. lied to, particularly as Black Americans. What? <coughs> the, excuse me. The history. We've been we, we've been lied to about history. I've learned about the Fourteenth, Fifteenth Amendment. I learned about all the uh, that there were hundreds of Black men who were former slaves who were congressmen. I was like, who are these Black men? Who are these people? That is not in our history book. My little history book have a little paragraph on um, about all it said was that Harriet Tubman uh, started mm-hmm. the, the Underground Railroad and uh. Frederick Douglass was an abolitionist. That's all we knew. And right. uh, but I was a little eight-year-old girl too that watched the black and white TV and Dr. Martin Luther King. And all I knew is that I wanted my people free, and we were mm-hmm. bound. And so one thing led to another. And as I began to read and research, I saw that we had been lied to. And the Holy Spirit told me, "You mm-hmm. have to write a book about what you're discovering." Hence, I realized that my mind. And my people's mind had been effectively and strategically stolen. So when uh, Barack Obama came on the scene in 2008, the moment I heard his name, the Holy Spirit said, he told me exactly what he would do. And he did it. And he said, I want you to write a book about how his agenda and the flow that this man is going to have in this nation. And he's right behind a lot of stuff right now. Yes, I'm saying that by the Spirit of God. Uh, He said exactly what he would do. He said, I want you to write about it. Hence, I wrote uh, Stealing the Minds of America in 2008. That I got a royalty check from it yesterday. It is still selling. And so I knew when President Trump ran, who I just couldn't stand in in the beginning, and the Holy Spirit started dealing with me about that man. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. And I was like, he began to tell me things. He told me several major things that he was going to do. And I was like, oh, wow. And he said, you have an assignment to pray for him. That mm-hmm. was in 2016. I was like, okay. <laughs> and so I, I began to pray for Donald Trump. And long story short, I fell in love with Donald Trump. Yes, I'm a Trump girl. And, and, and you know why? Because the man loves America. He loves God. Is he is he perfect? No way. Neither am I. Right. But uh, he's got it right with Israel. He had it right with the church. He built yes. a strong military. I'm a military mom. Obama cut our military by seven hundred billion dollars. That concerns me as a, a blue star mom. And uh, Trump did so much right. There's never been a president that has done more for Black Americans than him. And you know the sad part about it, Maggie. A lot of Mar- Black Americans don't even have a clue because they look at the toxic lion mainstream media and so i do i talk about these political things so on from destruction to dignity uh uh, for three weeks i deal with uh, uh, clinical perspectives uh spiritual truths and a fourth week Mm -hmm. i deal with uh the scapegoat and uh, i just dissect it i'm dissecting that Mm -hmm. thing and uh it's it's a fun journey so uh it's just been amazing that's why i encountered you 
when I started from destruction to dignity, uh, uh, Kevin uh, reached out to me. And before uh, the first episode even aired, he asked me to be a part of the network. I was like, well, to God be the glory, of course. And that's why I first saw you. And your show has been in the top 10 as well as mine has been in the top 10. One of the weeks uh, of the top 10, uh, uh, episode one, two, three, and four was in the top four. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm glad I met Dr. Price. <laughs> I'm glad that God had this plan that he wanted me to just get up there and talk about what's in my heart and what I know. So, you know, I have over 40 years of behavioral health experience. And so I deal with a clinical side. I deal with the political side and I definitely deal with the spiritual side. So some people say, well, what's your book about? And I say, it's about uh, social, political and spiritual issues affecting mm -hmm. us as Americans. So that's pretty loaded. And so stealing the minds of America, that can be purchased only through Amazon and it's still selling today. It, it amazes me. Uh, but stealing the minds of America is on Amazon and the scapegoat, which came out in 2020, that can be purchased only through my website, www.janicepons.com. So it comes in paperback, audiobook, and ebook. And when I had the paperback and the ebook, it was like, okay. And then the Holy Spirit, He said, okay, you got to go back and do an audiobook. I said, audiobook? What do you mean? <laughs> he was like, yeah, you got to do that. It's going to expand your outreach. And a lot of people love audiobooks. So that was a grueling yet very empowering. Um, process and experience to do the audiobook. So it's been a fun journey and God's opening up a lot of doors um, for speaking. Uh, I went in the studio this past weekend to start my musical CD. I sing as well. And it's, yes. it's uh, Janice Pons uh, for God and Country. That will be the name of the CD. And on the uh, podcast from Destruction to Dignity, that's me singing in the beginning and me singing at the end course I lay down the lead vocals and one thing I like about being able to have that ear for harmony I am my background singers I do the four part uh background harmony as well so oh wow yeah I don't have I don't have to get background singers it's like okay lay down one track I'll do the tenor uh soprano alto and then top it off with that first soprano on the top and so uh, I love one of my favorite things to do is to go in the studio and, and, and just to, to do that is very empowering. And God will give me a song and I'll hear it. And it was like, okay, I got to record that. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's just been a fun journey. You know, the Holy Spirit, he is just the conductor of the orchestra. And all we have to do is avail ourselves to him. Amen. Amen. Being spirit led is definitely the way. I listened to you singing holy and i'm telling you i was like lord that's such the sweet presence of the lord in her day because first of all i love that song and yeah. it's just very lord powerful you're holy. Lord, you're holy. yes yes lord you're holy and i was like oh, whoa because i you know i knew you from the tv thing and i didn't really know the full spectrum of all the things you did and yeah. then i see you wrote a song about biden's quote talk yeah, about that <laughs> You ain't black. What? <laughs> yeah, I did that too. And you know what? The, uh, God gave me the worst of that. He was like, oh, the nerve of him. <laughs> you know, he said the nerve of him. He keeps saying the most insulting things to black people. He said it when he was in here in Tulsa on Monday, talking about these young black entrepreneurs. They don't know how to, uh, they can't get lawyers and CPAs. Like we can't pick up a phone. I know how to get a lawyer. We know how to get CPAs, sir. You know, it just goes on and on. <laughs> these these are the kind of things that I go, who are you aligning yourself with? You know, what are they saying about you? It's 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 a really an insult to the intelligence of people that can think. And so so many things came at me as I was growing up, you know, and I was always politically inclined. And I asked God, God, how did I get hooked up with this political mindset? He said it was surrounding you everywhere. You know, yeah. Martin Luther King Jr., the riots, uh, all of the chaos that was going on, the Black Panthers, the KKK. The KKK would drive through, 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 through my neighborhood and bust out windows. And the Black Panthers, we were always looking for answers. The Jim Crow laws, it was madness. And so all, all I knew was that I wanted my people free. I yes. wanted the chaos to stop. I wanted the fear. 
and I realized how much I was traumatized, how much we were traumatized as a people. And a lot of times what a lot of black Americans are dealing with when you say, why are they, why are they talking like that? Well, they're dealing with it. A lot of them are dealing with unresolved, unprocessed trauma, uh, historical trauma. And then they even have, they're traumatized by the lies and they, it just gets embellished and they don't even know the truth. And actually, if they knew history that was accurately told, they could get free and some shackles would break off their mind. That's where I come in. And uh, as one of the people that was speaking, that's what I do in Still in the Minds of America and, and the scapegoat as well. And, uh, you know, God wants his people free. And you are my sister in Christ. I look at you. Your skin color is a little lighter. You're, you're lighter than me. But, honey, we got a revelation. We, you are my sister. You my, you my girlfriend. You yes. are my sister. We got yes. the same daddy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, we're, we're part of the human race. race. <laughs> all this critical race theory. Um, man, uh, trying to bring that same devil back to separate us again. And it's all yes. perpetrated upon a lie that you are my oppressor and I am the oppressed. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus said that Satan is the father of lies and the truth has never been in, in him. You're not my oppressor. I'm not the oppressed. That's right. We, we, Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's no way I can be oppressed. Did I Amen. go through racism? Yes. Did I go through institutionalized racism? Yes. But you know what? There's some bad people that are black and white. And, and that's right. You, you got black folk to think that um that there's no way that a black person can be racist, not true. Uh, but see, it's that the problem is the heart of man. Yes, the heart, yes. The heart above all things is wicked. It's that's wicked. right. And if we are not submitted to the spirit of God, we're gonna be doing some dumb things and treating people the wrong way. And so I speak into those things. I have a passion for my brothers and sisters in Christ, I have a passion. For the loss, I have a passion for addicts and alcoholics, like you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> and I enjoy speaking into that. I love doing clinical uh, work in that area, mental health, uh, addiction. I love the politics too. I just love it all because you know what? God's interested in it all. He is. He is. <laughs> he is. And nothing gets by uh, without knowing. Uh, that he has a plan for everything. But yes. you brought up something really important, and it, and it it has bothered me um, seeing what's happening in the schools with yes. the critical race theory. Right. And because, you know, I mean, so many people are being shamed. I had somebody call me a um, privileged white, and then I won't say the other word, but it begins, begins with the B. Right. Um, because I had made a statement standing up for the police, local police department when there was some stuff going on. And I was like, you know, you, you, you have to respect and honor, you know, them. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't see I, I, I think it's fine for people to protest and voice their, you know, and so forth, yeah. but not in a dangerous way. And it got it got all sticky. And I had made a comment and boy, it got ugly. I mean, it, you would have thought that I was the, you know, the way they attacked me, I was like, whoa, I'm like, you don't even know me. You have no yeah. clue who I am. Yeah. And so it just really, it hurt my feelings thinking that not for me, just thinking that the perception was that I was the enemy and I didn't understand. And, you know, so it's heartbreaking to see that taught in the schools and kids to be feeling and feeling like they are um, oppressed and that the other kids are to feel shameful for things that maybe their ancestors did. And or it's didn't just heartbreaking. Do. Or didn't right. do. <laughs> or, or didn't do, right. Yes. And now I know, uh, you know, my family, um, when I moved to Tennessee, my, my roots were here. Mm -hmm. And um, I went out on some land where my family's land was in the 1800s. And I repented on their behalf. I did. I did, you know. I went out there and I was oh. and every election I go out there and I pray for unity, you know, unity among the brethren, because you're right. We have been lied to. We have been made to think that things are just one way. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's heartbreaking whenever you do start to read and so forth. You know, you remind me a lot of uh, Carol Swain. Do you know uh, Carol Swain? Yeah, Dr. Swain, I do. Uh -huh. Yeah, she reminds me of her so much. And yeah. she gets it and you get it. But there are Absolutely. so many people that don't get it. And it, it just breaks my heart. Well, we have to speak the truth and love. You said you would call those names. Guess what? Welcome to the club. 
because I've been called the same name. And I've been called the the um <clears throat> the name of chapter one in my book, The Scapegoat. The name of chapter one is a dangerous Negro. <laughs> right now, I was like and, and 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 I've been called that by black people. I'm saying, wow, hmm, dangerous. When was I dangerous? When I started successful substance abuse treatment programs, when I became the first black school psychologist in Charlottesville, Virginia, when I was teaching underprivileged black children the joys of being excellent readers. Tell me, when was I dangerous? They and and, and as I learned, I was a dangerous Negro when I left the Democratic Party. Wow. That was the way that you knew the truth. Yeah, yeah. But let me say this. Let me say this to you. <laughs> I had a very powerful woman of God, Dr. An uh, Dr. Angela Powers, say this to me. And it really ministered to me. I already knew it, but I don't know. It penetrated my soul when she said it. And this is what she said. These things, like the name called it. I, I, I've had public smear campaign. My picture blown up like I'm a fugitive. Just slaughtered slaughtered by black people just like you know they think I'm, they think i'm a lost cause and here i am doing all kind of things to set our people free the children what's in me i mean to god be the glory to god be the glory but those situations were designed to take me down and mm -hmm. yes in the beginning they hurt me but let me tell you what when i got this revelation and i always knew this because of uh other things that had happened to me in the past is that i choose to be better and not bitter you get get the design. The enemy's design is to make us bitter with those things that right. happen to us. But I know better. Right. I know better. But those things were for those things fortified me, Maggie. Those things made me tougher. Those things made me more compassionate. I I realized I said, Devil, you a liar. You will not take me down emotionally with that mess because it's from the pit of hell. It's not from right. God because it doesn't edify, it doesn't comfort, and it does not exhort amen and, and if it doesn't corinthians talks about those things so immediately a mature believer the book of hebrews says the mark of maturity in a believer is the it, it, the mark of maturity is those that can d discern evil and good right so that, that's evil so it's like ah oh, i know where that's coming from i know that that's the enemy trying to take me out so in the name of the lord jesus christ i remind the enemy of who i am i am the elect of god the the same power that raised jesus from the dead quickens my mortal body amen there's a mystery that that has been hid for ages and ages but it is now revealed what is that mystery christ in janice christ yes. in maggie the hope of glory we are filled with the fullness of the godhead bodily amen we are seated in heavenly places in christ jesus see <clears throat> That's what the enemy is trying to keep from black folk, from mm -hmm. white folk, from yeah. humanity and us scrapping over each other. Critical race theories from the pit of hell, because in Christ, there's no Jew, no Greek, no bond, no free, no male, no female. So there's no black, no white. So yeah. we're all one in him. Yes. And so the enemy is coming against it. This is why they got that spirit of antichrist to keep us from realizing who we really are. So That's right. when we. We have to embrace that truth. And that's what we need to put in the atmosphere. They putting this all this junk out there. So how do we get rid of a critical race theory? Absolutely rejected. Amen. Absolutely rejected. We have no part of it. It's a theory. It's not even law. They want to ram it, cram it down our throats and make a law. Parents need to show up in schools. They need to be asking about curriculums. They need to be coming to school board meetings. They need to be the squeaky wheel. When I was a teacher and a school psychologist, uh, I knew that the parents that showed up, and I, when I was a school psychologist, I taught those uh, lower lower socioeconomically classified parents how to show up and be actively yes. involved in the educational process of your children, asking who, what, when, where, how, and why. Critical race theory, you better be showing up at the schools. You That's better right. be asking your teacher, this, your uh, children's teacher what's going on. And you got a lot of people that are taking the children out of school because they are just like, they're not going to subject their child to this. But we need to be showing up. And I say this, the church, yes. the church, pastors, spiritual leaders, please speak up about these things. Because, it, I mean, we're sitting on the sideline and God has called us to go into the highways and the byways and to be actively involved and, and, and to get actively involved politically, uh, socially speaking these things, even from the pulpit and stop being scared and stop 
focusing on this, I, I say that the church and the gag order, the gag order where they think they're mm -hmm. going to control you and control what you say. It's time to speak up. It's time to shout it from the mountaintop. mountaintop. Look at what they're doing because we remain silent. Because mm -hmm. we remain silent. It's time to get involved. I, You said something that spoke to me. I thank you. Thank you. God bless you for standing out in the field and, and, and speaking life over uh, of what happened in the past and declaring yeah. and decreeing. My church yes. is doing the same thing. We're going out into quadrants in the city mm -hmm. and praying right. and claiming Man. this city for That's the right. kingdom of God and pushing back on the darkness Amen. and taking authority in Jesus' name over addiction and domestic yes. violence and the things that have brought harm to our communities and, and wants to keep people from realizing who we really are in Christ. Amen. You know what, Maggie, it's a new day. And so Amen. you and I get together and talk about these kinds of things and expose the lies and put that truth out there, boy, we, we going somewhere and it's expecting us when we get there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I do believe in the power of prayer and pulling down the strongholds. And I think that if, if Christians recognize, like you were saying a while ago, you were decreeing over yourself, you know, what the same spirit that rise Christ from the dead is alive in us. And yes. I think that so many people back down because they don't know what to do and they, and, and it's powerless and God has not called us to be powerless. He's called us to be be walking in the spirit and discerning the times and so as we see these things happening we have to get on our knees you know uh, fighting on our knees is probably our biggest thing that we can do and there are so many watchmen on the walls that have stepped down and have gotten discouraged and are like they feel like they you know just can't and i'm like get back on the wall keep praying standing agreeing coming into agreement with what god says not what the news says not what not what you know everybody's talking about we have to understand that we're in a spiritual war as well mm -hmm. and that spirit of antichrist is alive and well but Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And if we recognize that, walk in that, speak the truth with love, and decree and declare those things, we will see a shift. Absolutely. And 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 praying and getting actively involved. Yes. Actually getting involved. You know, they're saying that uh, one of the uh, biggest things that needs to happen now is for believers to get involved on the local level, school board, city yes. councils. Uh, I'm a precinct chair. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm endeavoring to wrap my mind around what does that mean? I knew at a minimal of uh, being the precinct chair of my precinct here is that I can pray because I was praying. I said, Father, in Jesus name, the precinct at a minimal, I know that there are families in this community. This, this radius that I am the precinct chair over, I mm -hmm. have spiritual dominion and authority. Yes. Over Amen. The and so I, I was coming against domestic violence. Uh, addiction. I was praying for healthy relationships in families and children, cohesiveness, harmony, yeah. empowerment. You know, listen, the enemy doesn't want us doing that, but you know what? All the more reason for us to step out in boldness and do it. So we got to get involved. It's important. Well, you are, you are dangerous to the devil. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to be, we're, hey, we're supposed to be that, we're supposed to be those gals that when our, our feet hit the floor in the morning, is that, like, uh oh, she's up. That's right. She is up. And you know, which leads me to this before, you know, there's certain things we can do for our wellness and our spiritual growth. And one thing, the moment your eyes wake up, you get connected with the Heavenly Father. You get Amen. connected with the throne of God because Him cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus, thanking yes. God for uh, His angelic host that protect us. and all around us and that we're led guided and directed by the holy spirit you know yes. one of my themes my theme right now i am so sold out to this that i am crucified with christ yet i live yet not i but christ lives yes. in me and the life that i now live in the flesh <laughs> i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me that is my anthem 
Amen. Amen. Yes. And we can never go wrong whenever the word leads us, the word guides us and calls us to do the things that we're to do here on the earth. You know, we are living in, in, in interesting times, but God is still on the throne. And he has not forgotten his people. And, you know, we can stand in agreement. And I so appreciate your willingness to speak up about this, you know, as being a white woman, people don't want to listen to what I have to say about critical race theory. They're like, oh, you're just, you know, a privileged whatever, you know. And I'm like, you just don't know. I, you know, I grew up in poverty, you know, and, and I, I, but I got, an, you know, an education. I was an eighth grade dropout, eighth grade okay. dropout. Wow. And went back and got my GED and then went yeah. back and got my bachelor's and went back and got my master's and went on and so forth. And that's why when I met Dr. Carol Swain and I was sitting at a table at a Christian Women in Media uh, dinner with her and she was telling her story. I was looking at, look at God, look at God, you know, yeah. uh, different states, different places. But she had shared all of her things as well. And I was going, you know what? We we bleed the same. Why do people want to look at the exterior thing? Man looks on the outside. God looks at the heart. And the, the quicker that we start looking at each other through the lens of, of the Lord instead of our own mindsets and do what he says to do, the quicker we can bring unity in the body. And then we can be that example to others. You know, we're called to go, you know, God goes before us and we're called to greater things. I love that you said that earlier, because I believe that for every man, woman, and child, regardless of what they're born into, regardless of the family strongholds, regardless of the social economical, God is no respecter of person. And he wants to touch everybody's lives with his love. So I just love that. That's what we need to stand on, and we need to teach it to our children. This is yes. how you combat the lies. You got to put that truth out there. And Amen. Race theory, we we don't accept it, and this is what we do accept. This is what we do pro uh, promote. We promote unity in the body of Christ. If yes. we disagree, if we got a conflict, we're solution focused problem solvers. We know we know how to uh, uh, to uh, to negotiate. Uh, um, um, problem solving skills and, yes. and 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 how to get along and 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 solutions solution focused problem solving and conflict resolution that's what i was looking for yes conflict okay shoot conflict that's nothing to us conflict resolution oh there's steps to go through that teaching our children how you do that and amen deal with that we got to go there and I, that, that's what I'm called to do. That's what I'm about. So, you know, so grateful for what you're doing and for being a voice, not just for the Lord, but for the multitudes of people that need to be educated. And, this, and somebody needs to sound the alarm, you know, say, hey, this isn't right. You know, so thank you for all you do. Janice, if you could leave the audience with the key, what would that key be? Oh, wow. You know, hey, listen, reject the lies. Reject yes. the lies, call them what they are, and speak the truth into the atmosphere because it is the truth that will set us free. Stop being scared. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but right. power, love, and a sound mind. Speak the truth boldly. Speak the truth in love. And sometimes love is not, see, the truth uh, is going to sound like hate to folk that you're stepping on their toes, but that's their issue not yours, and you need to refuse to own their issues. Amen. Amen. Well said. Thank you so much for being on here today. Y'all, listen, you can go to www.JanicePons, plural, Dot com and buy her resources. Now the uh, the first book is available on Amazon, so right. you'll you'll see it there. But you can also you can download her music. It's absolutely wonderful, and you definitely got to hear the song that she wrote about Biden. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how insulting! I mean, that that statement he made was. You and I'm like going, He said, "You ain't black. You ain't black." I said, "Oh Lord, there you go." There you go. And and I said, and I said, I think there's a song in that. And I said, Lord, I am not going to write a song on that. But if you want me to write a song on it, you give me the words. Two days later, he woke me up at 520 in the morning and had all the words. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Y'all go get her books, follow her, watch her on Creative Motion Network. She also, so you, the Creative Motion Network is also, is that a show also available on YouTube as well? 
Uh, it is. Well, I have a YouTube channel. All of the From Destruction to Dignity is on my YouTube channel. Of course, it's on my Facebook page uh, uh, as well. And uh, so I'm, I'm out there and uh, we just, you know, there are different ways to access what I've got to say and what I'm thinking about. And I, I just love America. I love my country. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I love the lost. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I appreciate you all. Y'all go get her book. You definitely, it's a must read as well as her music and follow her on all the platforms that we mentioned. God bless you guys. We will see you here next time on Keys to Your Best Life. Awesome. God bless.